to publish video content, but then make it interactive so that folks can um, engage with the video. And it helps right now they're partnered with the NFL and it helps fans engage with their teams, build closer relationships to the players. And it also lets the teams understand what kind of content fans are really excited about, what they're interacting with and engaging with, and how to build uh, closer closer relationships and communities around around that content. So needless to say, we're super excited to have you, Najee. Thanks for hopping on. Thank you for having me. How you doing? <laughs> Good. Now I'm very familiar with the technical difficulties of uh, what's going on today. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's amazing because we get to still have this conversation, but definitely add some new some new stresses in there, um, which I know you appreciate. You've got two little ones that are oh, doing yeah. homeschool, right? Yeah, I got two little ones that are doing homeschool, and they need Wi-Fi just as much as I do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a fight, man. I'm, I'm all yeah. like scrambling. Get off the Wi-Fi. <laughs> exactly. Virtual, virtual circle time, virtual singing time. So, yeah. That's awesome, and um, I would love. So, I definitely want to talk to you about you know, this new world of like digital sports, we're going into more and more that VPO clearly has such a role to play in. Um, but I think first, if we can throw it way back um, yeah. to kind of how, how you got started and, and hear your story and then how you ended up where you are today. Um, I know you, you mentioned to me that, you know, growing up, your dad was actually in the NFL. So yeah. how, if, if you could kind of paint the picture for us, what was that like? And, and what, how did yeah, you grow yeah. up thinking about that? So, yeah, I um, grew up in Cleveland, Ohio, where my brothers and I, well, actually, we were born all over, like you said, because my dad was playing in the NFL, um, where my brothers and I grew up. But, um, yeah, my dad played in the league. Uh, he played, he got drafted in 84 to, he played to 91. He actually played through a similar crisis um, through the new CBA strike replacements and stuff like that. So I had a lot of guidance um, being a now current nflpa member um voting for our new collective bargaining agreement but yeah i grew up in cleveland um my father and i were the first father-son combination that played at philadelphia eagles which was pretty cool and um yeah we kind of had that football legacy that pedigree teamwork and grew up with all the le life lessons that football taught us and uh yeah he went to uh, youngstown state obviously everybody knows i went to west virginia and a lot of my family went to uh, Youngstown State and Ohio State when they played for Jim Trestle, and I had to do something different. I uh, ventured out on the limb and, you know, <laughs> stuck with Morgantown and <laughs> everything. Well, we're happy about that. Uh <laughs> <laughs> so, so did you grow up? Were you Now, growing up, were you like, I'm going to the NFL? Yeah, it was like, it was weird because my dad is, um, you know, we very close, my brothers and I and my father. We never really had that pressure of, of actually playing in the NFL, but it was just like something that we always knew. And as a lesson that I learned from my father, you know, as far as like, you know, when to push and when not to push. And, you know, um, a lot of valuable lessons that I keep today because he didn't, he didn't strain at us, but he always told us to keep, keep up the hard work. And he always pressed education and is what led, led me to West Virginia in my career, you know, in engineering. And, you know, around my sophomore year, we played against, um, I want to say we played against Colorado, and then we came back home and played against Louisville and beat them at home. It was the year that we went to the Monica Carker Bowl, Pat White's last home game, our last bowl game. And I was like, damn, I got a good chance that I might be all right at this. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, let me try. Let me try. Let me try. <laughs> Rolled the dice, and now I'm winding up going into 10. So. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so, yeah, you you found out you're pretty good at football. Um, did you now kind of when you're back in high school and stuff, was it what did that look like for you? Was it like all football all the time, super just focused on that? Did you have anything else that you were kind of into or enjoyed? Yeah, yeah. So my father works for Ford. My family is also, um, you know, being Cleveland is a big automotive city, Detroit, Cleveland, Pittsburgh. Um, my mom is actually from around that area. But um, yeah, I grew up and always had a fascination with cars. And it's one of the reasons, again, why I was led to West Virginia. I had a fascination with architect cars and mechanics and saw how good the engineering program was there and just how we got to mess around with stuff. And I just saw like all of the things that were going around the university. 
And I actually had offers and opportunities to go to other schools, but West Virginia was on the up as far as, you know, development, technology, tools. They were going through the huge transition with petroleum and mechanical energy. And my dad is, he, you know, I have Mustangs. My dream car is a Mustang. It's not like nothing crazy, nothing foreign, but it's an old fashioned 1967 uh, Shelby, you know, uh, hatchback Mustang. <laughs> And uh, that's like what I grew up around. I saw the movie Gone in 60 Seconds and I thought I was Ricky Bobby ever since. (laughs) 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 That's kind of always had my attention. And um, my father just drove us. He just, you know, he drove us and my brothers. We always had great competition. And, you know, they, they went to, they went to school for something similar. My one brother is a project manager. He does construction. So he's around the construction engineering world as well. And we all just kind of stuck from there. Nice. And so, Okay, you're super into cars, interested in kind of mechanics and industrial and some engineering and technology development and all of that. Kind of set your sights on WVU and and end up coming to West Virginia. And so kind of what then were you, how was football? You were a walk-on, right? Yeah, yeah, that was a, yeah. That's a funny part of my story that a lot of people don't recognize after playing so long. I actually walked on because I went through the whole transition of getting recruited by schools and just wanted to venture out on my own. I was the knucklehead of the family and wanted to <laughs> walk around and entrepreneur, like, you know, kind of do some things on my own and find my own research. And my oldest brother was actually a really good guy in life for me. But when he told me to go about go to West Virginia, you know, he said, you know, just study some things that you, you never knew before that, you know, you would definitely like to have your interest. And then it caught fire. It caught fire to me wanting to go to school for engineering and I walked on, you know, I, I had such a drive that the opportunity was, you know, if I get a chance to play, which a lot of the guys that were coming out, I went to school with Ted Ginn. I played against my brothers and I played against guys like LeBron James going from Cleveland, Ted Ginn, um, guys that are still in the NFL today, you know, NBA, obviously, you know, with the whole LeBron James, Michael Jordan affairs. And so, you know, playing against those, those type of athletes in college, I walked on and saw the opportunity to play with like Pat White, Steve Slayton, you know, I, came to the game and saw the Ruby Memorial Hospital parking lot flooded. (laughs) And at the same time, my brothers was telling me and my dad was like, you need to go to school to make sure that you have the opportunity in school to play football. And we went to the Fiesta Bowl, which was like a welcome to college football. I saw Owen Smith running down the (laughs) sideline. And yeah, I, um, actually did something that was probably one of the best choices I made as being, a, you know, entrepreneur and, and discovering business was I got a job. <laughs> I got a job my spring semester and I got a job actually a summer of going into my rest freshman year. So sophomore year of school wise, I got a job. I was a, a head logistics of janitorial services. <laughs> so wait, wait, let me hold, hold on for a second. You are getting your industrial engineering degree. You're, yeah. you've walked onto the football team and yeah. you're holding down a job as, at oh, the, yeah. it was at the hospital, right? Yep. I got a job working at uh, Ruby Memorial Hospital um, and then working over at the hospital that was across from, I think it was um, at, or across from, right across from where Cata Corner to University Ave. Um, okay. I can't think of the other name of the hospital, but we, I, I got a job working there and I saw the signs on the Ruby when they were doing a new construction, anybody from here in Morgantown, March Weston. So I March Weston. So I March Weston. And come to find out, Dr. Bird, Jack Bird, who's the head of the, you know, the yeah. engineer, industrial engineer, he was telling me about, you know, you can you can have a an internship with him. So I thought it was pretty cool. I'm like, all right, I get to see this. And it was hot summertime. All my boys on the team, Noel and Pat and those guys, they're going out and I'm working third shift from eleven at night to eight in the morning. And the funniest thing about it is that I got to see him go out to the club. And then when I come back, they'll be waiting. <laughs> <up>. <laughs> so, uh, it was like, it was nostalgic thinking about it, you know, just seeing my buddies go out and enjoy that time. But I actually got to do some pretty cool stuff. I got to put together different sections of the hospital from, you know, my, you know, the opportunities that we had. Ruby had been expanding at the time. So I got to see how beds were put together, machines were built. And, you know, in the other time we would just joke around and fall asleep on all the trash with all the guys. But we got to actually participate in a lot of what the Ruby is currently looking like as far as the inpatient, outpatient rooms. 
And then that actually got me more dialed in. So when I came back to West Virginia, we would take classes, you know, in, a, in the fall time with classes, you know, revolving around all of those different variances, machines and tools. And like actually ended up making a good decision because when I was doing it, I hated it, but I was getting paid. But it was all <laughs> one common goal. And yeah, that freshman year, my redshirt freshman year, I ended up earning a scholarship and ended up starting um, about five or six games. So that's it, amazing. So yeah. you're holding all that down at one time. I mean, most people hang on to like one of those things. Oh yeah. <laughs> they're doing really great on they're doing really great on the team, or they're doing they've got their school the serious school degree, or they've got a job they're focused on. <laughs> the job was funny. I got some I got I still got good friends from there and the 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 nucleus that I made at West Virginia, those guys, they it's funny to see them pop up on Facebook now speaking of technology, because you would never think that those guys would be on stuff like this, but now <laughs> Totally yeah. On yeah, yeah, I mean, that's that's what it's about. I mean, it sounds like you definitely uh, learned a lot of time management skills, which, you know, I have to imagine serves you well these days, too, as you're juggling all these different roles you play. Oh, yeah. I'm still working on it, according to my kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's like a new variable, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, um, okay, so... You get through kind of school, you're starting and a huge part of the WVU team. And, you know, you'd had this job and learning a lot. Um, then you head out into the professional world and, and you've got a shot at the NFL. Like, what did that feel like? What was running through your head? Um, it was really, honestly, like it, it, I can't, the emotion of the feeling was, you know, it was electric. It was uh, something that, like, I'm, I'm really big into music as well. And it's something that, like, you know, like, the games, the music, the energy. We played against the last game that we played our junior year against Russell Wilson, you know, Seattle Seahawks. We lost to him my junior year. And I remember an agent coming up to me. And, you know, it was my first idea about going into the professional sports. And I'm thinking about school and I'm thinking about making sure that, you know, everything is – taken care of properly for that to be finished because I was going into my senior year and I had my capstone course and I got you know some interest in the NFL and I couldn't believe it honestly <laughs> I, I, I'm just like you know I'm a dude from Cleveland playing at West Virginia we were really good we had great players but you know I didn't see myself as far as being a part of the picture until I actually you know applied it and then my senior year going into the games everything just be kind of came routine and schedule and um, the hardest part about my senior year was engineering. <laughs> so, <laughs> I had to make sure that I was tuned in to classes and, you know, what the guidance that I had from Dr. Burr, I was able to do it. And when I actually got my first notification from the NFL, it was actually to the Atlanta Falcons, you know, that came and saw me, which is a huge team. I was really, you know, a big fan of and then the Pittsburgh Steelers. So I know that everybody up there was really happy. And... The day I got drafted, I'll never forget. I was sitting in the IHOP, eating <laughs> eating a Western omelet with no ham. There and you I, go. That feels <laughs> right. <laughs> I jumped up, pancakes flipped off the table. <laughs> my dad was sitting at the table, and everybody at IHOP thought that I was literally about to go crazy because I jumped up, yelled on the phone. I started talking about it. They had my name go across the screen um, for the draft, and it was like, you know, it was a dream come true. It was a... Uh, I mean, it hit me in my chest. It was a dream come true. My mom was calling me my dad. I mean, I'm yeah. yelling and screaming water oh everywhere. Pancakes. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but uh, oh, one, yeah, yeah nice. the one thing that was cool was um, the one thing that was cool that was actually really funny. I actually had a phone call this past week and um, a guy that was about 11 years old asked me, he was like, is it funny now that you've actually done what you wanted to do your entire life? And I was like, Damn, I was like, man, that's actually kind of as deep. This dude was like 11 years old. I'm like, yeah, now that you've accomplished your goals, now that you, you know, and I'm like, oh, I still have hopefully the rest of my life to live. But then I started thinking about everything we're doing with, you know, school and Vantage and VPO and everything like that. And it, it like really brought me back down to the things that I was a part of in my life when I was growing up, like as a teen and then getting to where I am now. But yeah, I mean, the, the moments in time have been priceless. Wow. Yeah. I mean, all right, so we're going from, we're in IHOP, flipping, <laughs> flipping pancakes, cloud nine, like dreams coming true. And then 
not so long after that, you yeah. have a pretty big injury. Yes, yes, yes. I um, yeah, that was pretty crazy. I've uh, the number fifty two has been like really crazy to me, and it's um, fifty two games I've played in. You know, thirteen each of the four years that I played. Um, I wore number fifty two because Noel had number seven. Which, you know, I'm I'm not too shabby, you know, it's whatever. <laughs> That's his number. He wore it well, I'll tell you that. Me and him <laughs> the end of the day. He looked better than I did. <laughs> and then um yeah, I got to um NFL and I won Super Bowl fifty two. There's my my jerseys hanging around everywhere, but it says Super Bowl on it, but still my jersey <laughs> on the yeah. Eagles. Yeah. But um yeah, I uh I I hit this this kind of recollection point um when I got injured my second year. My father and I keep referring back to him because we pretty much had the same track record in sports until after we went to the Philadelphia Eagles. I was drafted in the fifth round. My father was drafted in the fifth round. He came to the Eagles his second year. I came to the Eagles my second year. Um, it was really crazy. And we both knew the same long line of existence. But the first game of my second year, I tore my pec completely off the bone, uh, ripped my pec tendon, um, had took a kneecap right underneath my um, underarm and completely separated my actual biceps from my chest. It was really weird. <laughs> yeah. uh, it, it was, I like to compare, I mean, I've never, you know, been hit by anything, but it was like a razor or shotgun going through my shoulders. Yeah. And it sat me down for the entire year. It was a season in the injury. I was on the, um, Starting actually in NFL, I was making a big impact. I played games previous before, and I was really doing good on the verge of getting a big deal and tore my pec. And I had to, you know, understand what I was actually doing in life at 23 years old, 22 years old. And it was like, it was scary. But um, the good thing I was able to do was fall back on my network at West Virginia. And it's like, wow, I'm so happy to talk today. I was able to fall back on our co-founders, John and Grant, who I tore my pec against the Jaguars, the team that I'm, you know, last played with playing for the Eagles. And then I see Grant Wiley at, you know, at the, at a home game. Mm -hmm. so I, I come and I tore my pec and uh, I've broken my leg as well, but that was high school. So it was like a, you know, a little bit different. And I tore my pec, you know, go from literally making all the money in the world to making $0. Yeah. Which is like, I mean, you know, it, it was kind of, it was very, very weird. Uh, you know, roller coaster. Yeah. Yeah, total roller coaster. I had um, just bought a home, so I was, you know, really worried about that. You know, I hadn't had any kids at the time, so I'm just really like thinking about what I'm about to do with my torn pack. And I actually was considering retiring. I mean, I didn't know what was going on. Sure. 90% 90, 90 of the guys that actually have season in injuries never come back. So it was, uh, it was, it was a dark time just for me. And I went through some things just going to rehab and going through, you know, seeing a psychiatrist because it was, you know, it was something that I always done. And even though engineering was very real and it existed and entrepreneurship was very real, it, it, it didn't seem like I could grab it because the thing that I was best at was taken away from me. And it, uh, but that's I, when you met. That's when. So you. Yeah, you're kind of in this super you're in this super stressful kind of yeah. qu having to question a lot. Yeah. And then. You connect with Grant and Jonathan and hear about this thing they're dreaming up. So, yeah. so which, yeah. I don't mean to spoil it, but yeah. it was VPF. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. So tell, I mean, how did that, I guess, how did that dream come to fruition? And there then, was. you know, how did that help kind of, how did that drive reignite in you to put your head down on towards that goal? Yeah, it woke up. It definitely did exactly what you said. It woke up a uh, fire and then started ignition. And, and and me personally, something that I just never knew that I had. And like with any experience in life, you know, you come up against these obstacles. When I got hurt, yeah, I went, <laughs> it's funny, I saw, I'm sitting on the sideline at Grant and I'm looking at Grant. And Grant and I had talked before we had met and like I, I never really thought anything of him. And I'm like, this dude is the best player at West Virginia defense, lead and tackler. I'm trying to get back to the league. I'm trying to actually do all these things in football. Let me talk to him. And then he yeah. throws his idea out about VPO. <laughs> You're like, like, that's not football. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, what? He's like, he's like, bro, trust me, it's the exact same thing. You have a team, we're gonna run a play, you're gonna come out the huddle, and we're gonna tackle everybody. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, all right. Entrepreneurism. Yeah. 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 
that's the whole entire outscope of it. And I'm just like, all right, I think I could do that. I'm like, that that makes sense. So I actually being in Philly, you know, it was pretty cool. We can catch the um, Amtrak up to New York. So Grant at the time and John, they're still up there. You know, they're between New York and Delaware. And he has spun on me his idea of, you know, enhancing the the environment that we're around through digital media. And in 2012, you know, that's when Facebook, you know, Facebook has always been Facebook, but Instagram had just started escalating. Social media was getting involved with colleges. You know, the school had just created a social social media platform. And I remember seeing it too. I think the school that had about 7,000 users at the time, followers on Twitter. And I was like, you know, Twitter had been going and now the school and everybody's getting involved with it. And Jonathan and Grant, I came up with this idea, you know, along with a few other friends that's like, why can't we literally, you know, connect ourselves with what we are viewing? You see it in movies, you see it in, you know, things like that. And and Jonathan was like, you know, yeah, because it's hard. It's, you know, it's really hard to use some other language. <laughs> He's like, it's hard. And I'm like, yeah, it's really hard. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, God. And then we sat down in New York and we figured that, you know, when you are able to produce or publish a photo or video, that, you know, if I want to learn more about it, especially for the demographics of what's going on with social media and, and, you know, technology, I should be able to access that, not just in order to buy it, but to actually, you know, get it gained in depth information. And when I saw that, Grant was like, yeah, man, just take this, take it back to, you know, Philly with you. This is something that you can work on in your free time. And I, next thing you know, I'm artistic. I like to draw. So I started drawing our logo. Cool. And yeah, I ended up drawing our logo. And is that the logo we have today? No, it's a render of it. It's a rendition. Render of it, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. But we started drawing the first logo. Um, the yep, the V with the it's a handprint. And Jonathan was like, "Yeah, you should actually get involved. You should actually look more into it." And what I started to see was that through digital media and technology, everyone wanted to plug in. Everybody needs to connect. And you know, it's the, the platforms that exist today. Obviously, we're forced to use digital technology because of COVID, but right. they all. Are they all have a digital presence that is very, 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 you know, keen and very, very unique to activating and, and connecting with people. And, you know, what we found out, what Jonathan and our and Grant and along with our team have been able to perfect is how fast we're able to connect that connection and how transparent and how true it is. And, you know, once I was able to do that, we ended up bringing the, um, the idea to the Philadelphia Eagles and showing that the NFL, just like all these great businesses around the world, from grocery stores to clothing lines to fashion lines, you guys have all this great content. And the fans and the users stop at what they see. They always have to, you know, exit the experience to reenter it, or they have to actually, you know, leave the platform. And with VPO, we allow users to connect to one platform and to stay on it while actually, you know, learning more about what they're cl clicking on. So through photos and videos and what we were able to do with the team, why weren't you able to watch a highlight of Michael Vick, you know, or LaShawn McCoy? And our results were tremendous and they were kind of like breathtaking. And that's how we came to where we are today. And keeping that same attitude in football, I was able to keep my head down and I signed a new extension, had a nice signing bonus, signed a new extension with the team. And in 2017, we won the Super Bowl, which just happened to take the cake. We're, so, we're back up after yeah, that we're back up. up on cloud nine we got <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah no i mean that's that's amazing and i think you know you said it so well you know i see what what you all are doing with that it's like you're adding a, a three a third dimension to that video right it's like taking something 3d except it's not visually 3d it's a whole other level of getting involved and in, yeah kind of yeah. interacting and being a part of the content you're watching and like you said it's everything from being able to click and, and buy some clothing that looks really great and you love who's wearing it to also like finding out more information or background or connect and build community on social media with the people that you're interested in and watching on on the screen which oh, yeah. is like it's you know it's huge it's that could apply almost everywhere you know right now yeah y'all are really tied in with the nfl and and then the broader football and sports and, you know, but it makes me think, I'm curious what your take as someone who's always thinking about kind of the fans and, and how they're interacting and, and building this connection with teams. Obviously right now is a crazy time for sports. And yeah. 
you know, digital is kind of everything right now. People are wondering what's what's going to happen, what's next, what's, you know, where sports headed. And I won't, you know, ask you to read the crystal ball totally on what all sports yeah. are going to look like. Oh, but, I do <laughs> but I know, but what, you know, what do you, how are you thinking about in your mind how to, how VPO plays a role in this transition that we'll undoubtedly have and kind of leapt into the future of digital interaction in sports? Yeah. Um, I think that, I mean, I kind of know too from what I've seen that um, everybody's question in digital media and technology is, um, you know, engagement. And everybody wants to make sure that they keep their user engaged. And it's for multiple reasons, whether it's for a conversion of a sale or it's to retain information. And strictly standpoint that people always ask, what does your technology do? What does your technology do? Our technology is a tool that reconnects and establishes new engagement. And when I say reconnect new engagements, like you can't really reconnect new engagement, but fans actually spend on time, like some of our general statistics, and you can see these on, you know, you look at, you look, find them on Google, but, you know, users and fans are the same thing. You know, we have football as a hyper hyper interesting sport. So we understand that in the field of entrepreneurship that when users want to be involved, like students, for example, in a school, want to be involved with their lesson, they become hyper users because of the time that they spend on it. And we engage users on an extra account of time, which no matter what type of content provider you are, you want to make sure that you increase your engagement. And this is why our two can be used for any platform and business. So if you are doing giving a speech, you know, down at the student center for West Virginia and the student, the school puts that out on their app. And while the student is talking about, you know, this, the different fields or subjects, they want engagement to increase the knowledge and the actual, you know, the reach of that conversation. So while you're watching the conversation, we can actually make the student that's talking interactive to talk about the specific new building points, the VHO that's going on, or, you know, the new, the new problematic points that need to be solved. So users that are engaged with that student just because they know them will find out additional information because that they're actually being able to interact with things that, they, they hear them talking about that matter to them. So the platform that's being talked about, simply if it's a school or if it's another platform, they can actually engage with it while never leaving the person that they've come to the, you know, the actual platform to interact with, which for news, you can do it for, you know, fact checking for different types of items. You can do it for TV when you want to retain the information of subscribers. And then for sports, obviously you can do it with, tickets and you can do it with you know any type of memorabilia so and once we thought that that was really what our company does there was a unlimited amount of information and data that we can organize we we just really have an efficient way to do it and when i saw that that's what our main goal was it was to connect you know that's what drove me and kept me to stick stick my head down because everybody's network that we come from in school i mean is 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 vast and you know even with the with vantage joining the school and, and the creation of what we're able to bring the connection is is definitely something that needs to be maintained and you know and that's what's happening right now people aren't able to go outside to connect in more more physical forms so um being that digital in the look of future sports i think that what sports will look like in the future, you know, I'm very confident that we will find a way to subside this. You know, the human mind is the most complex thing on earth, not a virus. So like, that's what I definitely believe. Yeah. But oh, um, I love, Yeah, I love that. And I think you're, you know, it keeps coming up in your story over and over again, right? This importance of that network and maintaining that set, that community and those ties and connection you have with people, you know, mm-hmm. whether it was rewind, way back and whether it was you know when you were in school or the the network you built with your other job at the hospitals to then the network of WVU football that helped you know bring you into this whole new world of you know diving in tech entrepreneurism and digital media um so how do you view kind of the importance of building that network building community um certainly as a you know personal brand can That's be incredibly say. important as, you know, as an mm-hmm. athlete. And I know there have been some changes with what college, you know, college athletes are allowed to do to help 
build their brand. How do you see VPO engaging with some of those changes as athletes really take their, you know, their brand and identity into their own hands in the digital yeah. world? I think that, yeah, the, um, with the terms of digital sports and tech, I see with VPO, what specifically we can do, um, being able to account and able to upgrade the platforms that produce the content, like with college sports and schools, and being able to account for the players and branding. Um, I saw Neil Brown mention about branding and, you know, what comes next with college sports and branding because of how much digital media is involved. Um, you know, I do believe that we'll be on the forefront of that with our integration into the WVU football team and, you know, a great job that LeBron did with getting players to be paid. And I think that all sports should be played. I think that our rifle the team is the number one rifle the team in the country for the past 30 years. So <laughs> they definitely totally. need it. So when it comes to uh, sports branding, the opportunity to brand um, our technology and what we can do specifically allows that attraction of engagement. So when a player has his brand, he has his type of engagement, his, his type of personality that users want to see. The schools will be able to do that. Vantage will be able to do that. VPO will be able to amplify that. And that's what sports will be because social media gives the athlete their own voice. So in professional sports, players are reaching out to brand and become more specific with podcasts and talk about subjects and issues that you know, dial up to larger issues. But I know that in college sports, you know, I do see that with the way that West Virginia is and how powerful we were when I was there, how powerful we become now. Um, and I love that, you know, we're the professional team of the sports, you know, shot, no shots to Marshall. <laughs> 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 I take them anyway. <laughs> I take them anyway. <laughs> but uh, we had some close games. But uh, yeah. I definitely <laughs> I see West Virginia joining the same thing immediately as far as like what LeBron is doing because of the, the the things that we can pass in the state and players getting paid. I believe that players should get paid. And what's pretty cool is that like um, an example, if you, you know, West Virginia integrated with VPO, you're at a football game, you want to support the, the quarterback, the, the wide receiver, the running back, you know, you can buy the apparel that the school has set up, that the school has actually had tailored to that player, which is his brand. And the multiple cool things around it is that there can be classes established around branding and trade. There can be classes established around finance for the player to learn about the money that he's making, which can all be digital. And then there is that the actual player and his brand, which all of those will be formulated into the next levels and steps of sports. And by that way, the same thing can be done with VPO with gymnastics. Why not support the gymnast or the rifling team by buying whatever marker or whatever leotard or whatever type of item that you can do to support that player and I know a lot of people ask the big thing about college players being paid. Um, we have solutions for that. There's ways, multiple ways to do it where you can substantially hold that money, you know, after their careers are done, but for the actual digital technology of sports, um, I definitely see that happening. And the amount of money that is involved, I see that that's happening. And, you know, users want to connect. Like, we want to know. We just had a phone call with our alumni. It was 100 about 59 guys in there and then the, the, the next one he had is about 110 and the older guys are calling the crack jokes and the younger guys because they know them you know they, they can get to know them and if you know us as teammates and former players want to know each other you know that fans want to know it and it's cool to see those brands getting out there like that yeah no i mean i feel like it's you know you're kind of blowing my mind with all the different ways that people would be able to, I mean, yeah, cause you develop this love for your players. Yeah. You're like, Oh my God, you know, you're my best friend, like, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. wanna, you know, and like helping people to like create the, have those stories and learn more about who people are and, and kind of the amazing things that are going on um, is a really cool opportunity. And, but I'm going to, we have a few questions coming in. So I'm going to no check problem. out what, what people who are watching are asking and, and let's see. Someone asked, are there any experiences that stand out for you as the most important when you're starting a company? Any experiences that stand out? Yes. The most important experience I would say that stuck out to me starting a company. Um, I, I had the opportunity to be around Wall Street and I had the opportunity opportunity with Jonathan, you know, to be around very, very high net individuals. And um, I always do around my locker room, you know, uh, we're around 32 billionaires. But the one thing I learned from that is that, you know, being the, not being the smartest guy in the room is always, you know, sometimes the best thing <laughs> to listen. 
because yeah. I just, just like IEs, you know, we perfect the process. We, you know, we go back and we take, you know, you know, statistic class and variance classes. And when you do a business, you want to do the test trial a, a million different times to do the correct trial once. So <laughs> definitely, totally. make sure, yeah, make sure you, um, the experience that stuck out to me was being in New York. Um, I got to meet um, a few guys that were large real estate moguls in New York. And you know, that's what they told me. They told me that make sure that you vet your process, you do your proper due diligence, and you understand that when you make a move, you want to make the move once so that as you continue to grow, you don't keep making the same mistakes or have to do it again. Yeah. Well, I love what you said about like, it's actually a good thing not to be the smartest in the room and to listen. I think like, you know, that can get you pretty far if you just actually listen to what people are saying. It's oh, a yeah. whole different ball game than, uh, you know, trying to scream over each other. Very much so, yeah. Um, okay, and then here's another one that just came in that's awesome. Um, what is the future of the fan experiment of the fan experience? Is it one where it'll all be on one platform? Do you think we'll engage across multiple platforms? That's funny. You can't. Can I answer that candidly? <laughs> <'Cause it's- laughs> yeah, totally. It's well, real talk. I think that yeah, for digital experiences, we will be the next. Um, you know, the very next large step. Fans want to know what they what what they want to know, um, and you know, sad to say, pop up ads aren't too shabby. <laughs> but I think that when it comes to a digital presence, I think that users and fans will be able to see the players that they want to see and interact with them as they continue to grow in their careers through sports. And when it comes to the actual physical perspective of the games. I do think that with the construction of stadiums, and one of the things I'm personally involved with being an NFLPA uh, member is that owners are actually doing a proper due diligence to make the entire experience of whether it's football, basketball, baseball, an actual, you know, experience when it comes to you coming to the games and being able to participate in VR and AR and then the actual stadium seats having food delivered to your seats and like you know treating you like you would at home but right there in the live action game so I think that that's where sports will get to and it'll become you know there are setbacks for what happens now but technology is always developed faster than what the world is today so I do believe that from a digital perspective you'll be able to plug into your favorite player by interacting with them, interacting through videos, interacting through photos. And players, like you said, want to get their brand out. So college athletes, you'll know a little bit more about them, that, you know, before they get to the big leagues, they'll be able to establish a brand. And I think that that's going to go a long way because as the students and kids do it younger, their peers and other businesses around them will do it at a younger age, which in turn, you know, better the whole system. Yeah, no, totally. Um, I think that's, yeah, it's kind of crazy to think about. And it is, like you and I were saying earlier, it'll be so fascinating to see how this time period kind of alters or just speeds up that yeah. whole process and how integrated we become. And in this like relationship, we're all realizing we can lean on through digital media. Right, right. Um, you know, there are some of us that are like, I know my, my little brother's 16 and he's always known that you can like carry out full you know social relationships via online right, right. and i'm just starting to accept that it does work pretty well that we're right. <laughs> able to all still connect um a few more questions rolling in i want to make sure to try and squeeze them in here um did your injury and the time following make you a better entrepreneur oh 100 percent um 100 it made me um it was kind of like my own personal quarantine um, from what, you know, I had to go back and, you know, before I was under the pressure, basically my injury made me look towards alternative plans. And I still knew what I wanted to do, which entrepreneurs face every day. They have a goal set in mind and their goal is, you know, that's the, that's the cream of the crop and being hurt it was simply I couldn't do what I wanted to do. So it made me devise other plans and it made me take those other test trials out as far as where I wanted to work out at, what I possibly might be able to do to keep up, you know, this type of lifestyle that I want or whatever, whatever, what else I might be able to do to improve on me overall. And yeah, I was fortunate enough to run into Grant and be shoved into that direction. 
but it actually made me sit back and think and this choice that I still had to face was did I want to do it and you know I you know I was able to take proper steps to to do that yeah absolutely and that's like that's a huge part of it right is is everyone says like you know there's a lot of it feels like a lot of luck and it feels like being in the right place at the right time but a lot of it is also when that door opens taking it yeah you know yeah. right yeah, <laughs> walk through to. it go yeah. <laughs> yeah so that's you know amazing that you were able because that's it that was a big pivot from where you were and and everything yeah. that was going on um all right someone's asking favorite jersey of the new teams that just dropped for 2020 favorite jersey uh, like, <laughs> <laughs> uh i mean they're actually pretty classic so that's like uh nah i like you know here in jacksonville we got some cool jer- the new jerseys that dropped I would say probably the Falcons or Tampa Bay, just because I like red. I'm, a, you know, it's my favorite color. So, you know, hey, listen, that's good a reason as any. I, <laughs> <laughs> I know I got some Steelers fans on there, and I'm black and gold. I grew up in Cleveland, so that's like that's rough. Oh, I gotcha, <laughs> I gotcha. <laughs> um, all right, well, just. A couple more. The the only ones left that are, have come through so far, um, and there'll probably be some more after this. So if you want to circle back, and we'll yeah. kind of keep we'll keep answering questions if they roll in a little late too um, in the comments. So everybody, throw your questions in there as you're watching. Okay. Um, but someone asked if you could talk just a little bit more about what exactly VPO is currently doing in West Virginia and with WVU. Um, and then where you see it headed in 10 years. So, yeah, currently we are, right now we are scaling in the league. We, if you download any of the team apps, which a lot of fans, you know, 70% of the fans enter the game through the team app because of digital tickets, you can actually experience what we're talking about with the Denver Broncos, the Philadelphia Eagles, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, when you're in their media, you can literally surf the entire internet, which is like, you know, People was like, what? What does that mean? Um, you can literally go to the photos, video section of the of the actual app, which, you know, into you know any other form of app is basically like a feed, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. And while you're on it, the cool thing about it is we kind of leave like an Easter egg. You see our logo. Once you see our logo, you see you can click on it. An infinite amount of objects are are um, linked to whatever and it's pretty cool to to tell people that because then they say, Oh, what are they linked to? And you know, it gives incentive. And then also with the school, we are working towards integration, fully integrate with the school to develop the first program, full first program where college, you know, athletes are paid. And, you know, with Neil Brown being able to, you know, express that that's been, that's ready for players and brands. Um, you know, we just have to take the proper steps to do it. We know, it, you know, we know it works and we're excited to do it. It's going to be pretty cool because West Virginia always had that mysterious, you know, aura about them. And I love that, that that covers the school because of the type of background that we have and the great minds that's there. So um, in the near future, you'll definitely see us in all of the sports teams apps. Um, we got some cool things that we can do with streaming services um, all the way from, you know, Netflix to Fox or whatever. So we're currently working on those things to keep, you know, keep scaling and keep building so that everybody has it. Awesome. And OK, I swear this is really the last one, but that's it's a classic. So I got to squeeze it in. Someone said. Favorite memory as a mountaineer? Favorite memory as a mountaineer? Oh, man. I done seen Owen do some crazy things. I love to put him out there like that. <laughs> <laughs> or Pat McAfee. Oh, man. I got a two-minute story. I first, first time ever coming into Morgantown, literally reporting to training camp. I meet Pat McAfee. He's laid down. He's laying down in his, in his lazy boy with a football and is and it's just holding it right here and he got a hat over his face and he's like, You guys ready to go to practice today? I'm like, Yeah. And he was like, well, shit, I'm not. And I was just like being, <laughs> being candid, being hundred percent candid. And I'm just like, who, who is this dude? And now everybody knows Pat McAfee. But my favorite uh, actual video or I uh, mean I mean not video, but actual memory had to be the last backyard brawl and went in an orange ball. But, you know, we, I don't know when Pitt is going to play the you know, Mountaineers again, but they'll have to show our game for the last one. <laughs> so totally. They're totally. pretty cool. We beat no, them in the Orange Bowl. 
that was pretty fun. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much for taking time to chat with us today, Najee. And we're looking forward to when we can all be back in Morgantown together. That's for sure. Right. Um, <laughs> and we'll be keeping an eye out on everything VP is doing. It sounds like it's, you know, really on fire right now. So it's really exciting to watch and just appreciate you taking some time. Thank you, Kelsey. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.